people talk about China today, as if it's constantly tied to its past and can't quite get into the modern world with the rest of us. One way that this plays out is by repeated references to Chinese leaders as emperors. We see this in particular quite a lot with Xi Jinping. In this video, I'll show you what I mean and suggest why this may be happening. Here's a really famous example of it. This image of Xi Jinping as the Tianlong Emperor, one of the really famous emperors of the Qing dynasty. This was on the front cover of The Economist back in 2013. And here's a very similar photo of Xi Jinping on the front of a Harvard University Press book on China's Belt and Road Initiative. And here are some newspaper headlines, all of which talk about Xi as if he's an emperor. Okay, so it might just seem quite banal to do this. Xi has a lot of power. Emperors of the past had a lot of power, we assume, and therefore Xi must be like an emperor. But I want to suggest that it's actually more than that. There is a tendency, and I'm speaking now as somebody who lives and grew up in a liberal democracy in Europe, there is a tendency to constantly link China back to its past. Occasionally we do see this in Western liberal democracies as well. A few years ago, there were several references to Boris Johnson, our then prime minister, as being a bit like King Henry VIII, but it's relatively unusual in the UK to do this, and yet it keeps on happening with reference to Xi Jinping. In fact, and this may sound a bit ridiculous, but bear with me, I'm going to suggest, and this is not just me by the way, there are serious historians of China who have studied this and written about this, there is a kind of leftover habit or way of thinking about China, which actually dates all the way back to the Enlightenment, when philosophers like Hegel talked about China as a country that was static and unchanging and undeveloping and literally, Hegel said, was outside of world history. Somehow, we in the West, we seem to have got kind of stuck and we keep thinking about China in that kind of way. If we talk about Xi as being emperor-like, what impression does that give us? Well, it might tell us that Xi Jinping is incredibly powerful, we know he is, but it sounds like he controls China through his whim. Whatever he says goes, China is a highly, highly centralized state, and one man at the top, Xi, like an emperor, has absolute control over everything. Now, this probably isn't how imperial dynasties worked in China anyway, but the image of comparing Xi to an emperor does strongly suggest that. That's the function that it has. And in fact, one of the articles I just referenced for you says that very explicitly. Xi has concentrated so much power in his person that he reigns not unlike an emperor. His statements instantaneously become policy and state officials, the latter day version of royal courtiers, jump to fulfill his wishes. There's a real problem with this, which is that lots and lots of recent empirical research that has studied how Chinese governance works in practice tells us that in fact it works nothing like that, even in the era of Xi Jinping. This is not the place to talk about the details of how Chinese governance works. I'm sure I'll talk about that in future videos, but I will just say that we know that China is a highly decentralized, fragmented state which works in highly complex ways and there is no way that one person at the top or even a group of people at the top are in control of everything. It's simply not how China works. So when we use this analogy of Xi being like an emperor, it's actually very, very unhelpful and misleading and tells us very, very little about China and how it operates in the real world. In the next video, I'll talk some more about this. I'll talk about how China's ancient tributary system is still being used by policymakers and analysts to interpret China's rise in the world today. Thank you for watching.